Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station, where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. Of course, we're also simulcasting on No Borders Radio, and you can hear that right from our site, TammyPepperman.org. By clicking on the play button on the No Borders radio player. Oh, this week has been very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, lots and lots of agents, lots of agent exposure, disclosure, uh, cannibalism. Judas keeps being hung politically. Of course, today... Somebody offered me peace. You can find that on my blog. I, of course, declined that offer. Peace stems from the word pax, P-A-X. A pact, a promise. That is the kiss of death. When you go through the United States Incorporated's documented, documentary evidence, you find that that is all they offer. The etymology on peace. Quote, freedom from civil disorder. Can't have you outside of that box. You've got to be ordered civilly. Peace. Reconciliation. Silence. Permission. From Latin. Passam, Pax, Compact, Agreement, Treaty of Peace, Tranquility, and the absence of what looks like war. Well, by golly, that is politics. That is democratic society in a nutshell. Demo meaning people and Kratis meaning to control or possess peace. That is what the United States Incorporated offers everybody. Promises, agreements, pacts, the kiss of death. Do you want to enter into that pact with Judas? No, I do not. I refuse your offer. I refuse your offer and I repudiate you, Satan. Get thee behind me. Now today it was uh, it was interesting to see at the BBC.com law graduate Rhiannon Brooker jailed over false rape claims. A law graduate who falsely accused her boyfriend of rape as an excuse for failing her exam, has been jailed for three and a half years. Hmm. Is the whore of Babylon being held accountable? She entered into that peace agreement, that compact with the attorneys and falsely accused a male and this of course is what was normalized for her for the very longest time under the political tool of feminism feminism said that she could be lawless under those Burgoy constitutions it's been an interesting journey this week I uh, had many a uh, Many a revelation here. And uh, you can read about the things that are going on by visiting TammyPepperman.org. Thanks to Ben. Getting up. Fixing it. Let me be absolutely truthful in all things. My administrator quit. And then handed the reins to me, of all people. I am not computer or HTML or FTP literate. 
So I played around with it for like three weeks and I was trying to update. I, I would do one good thing and then another really horrifying thing. And finally, I left it on the floor, just broke him, and along came Ben. And Ben, ben says, you broke your sight. And he offered to pick it back up for us, and um, he got it going again. And I'm so very thankful because the experience itself taught me so many lessons. Um, you know, here I was. For a very long time, I was buying from the law merchant. I felt that computer technology was outside of my realm, outside of my ability to grasp it. And... Um, I had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of law merchants selling me that same concept, telling me, no, no, look, there's so much code here, you will never be able to read it, and all of these things, and never once did they give me a fishing pole and teach me how to fish, they would just throw fish at me. So I, I was never forced to learn until I had the sight in my hands for three weeks and broke it. And then I realized many, many other things on top of that, but that was, that was one of the revelations. It was very, very interesting because throughout all of my walk, of course, I've learned from experience. And, and there's been concept movers and shakers throughout all of my walk that did sucker me. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that it's not easy. I have been suckered I don't know how many times. I'm like the world's biggest sucker in order to be right here right now telling you what to avoid. I had to experience all that stuff. So indeed, there would have been the word sucker on my forehead. And I bought titles and I bought I bought insurance. I bought titles. I, I did buy titles. I, I was I was in real estate and, and mobile homes from my family. I bought titles. You know, I lived in the past tense. I was seeking to be I've been there. And this is our whole point. This is the whole point of leaving the farm. I've been on the farm. I was a really good farm animal. I was a really great sheeple. At one time I was politically correct. I wouldn't stand up for anybody because I didn't want to offend anybody else. So I was always playing neutral until I saw the evidence for myself. And then I could use my discretion. And then I could make up my mind. But until this point in time, we walk along as children. We are all God's children. Children, kids, and we've got a predator called an attorney out there preying on us. This this thing is, is preying on us. And without having gone through the experience, I could never be here right now telling you, hey, look, I found the predator. Hello, hello, I found the predator. And the way to do that is you put yourself up against it or you put yourself... Near it, you have to experience this. First Corinthians 13, it says, you know, bear all things, suffer and bear all things. That's the only way to reveal what it is. So you have to have a contrast. You can't just walk around as children forever without any anything. You know, that is that is the question. And, and you need to answer that yourself. Are you are you going to believe your eyes or do you need to experience it? So that's exactly what happened to me. I didn't believe myself when I was witnessing this years and years ago. I kept blowing it off and saying, oh, it's got to be something else. And I bought into the theory that there was aliens. and I Because that's a really easy thing to buy into. You know, you can't imagine something that looks like another human being can be this psychopathic, this terrifying, this horrifying and so the easiest thing to do is say, oh, it's, it's aliens. <laughs> because because if I, 
admitted to myself that this was my attorney raising me and my family, killing community members, raping children, molesting them, and calling the shots on everything that happens to everything on this planet. Just one moment, folks. Sorry about that, folks. A little bit of difficulty here. Um, let's see what Jesus said. Matthew 10. You know, I've I've gone through so much of this walk. And the first few years, I was seeking peace. I just wanted this to end. But that's not peace. Peace is an agreement. It's a treaty. It's a confederacy it's a icky icky gross black disgusting thing that's what jesus said too in matthew 10 matthew 10 34 think not that i am come to send peace on earth i came not to send peace but a sword for i am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his own cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth me receiveth, oops, he that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of the disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall know in what no in no wise lose his reward. Now of course there's two different forms of death that are maintained in there. There's the death of the body, and then there's the death of a lifestyle concept what you find in this life may not be may not be what is perfect for you and so of course at the resurrection that would indicate that you lose a lifestyle however your body carries on so you would continue and find life again on the other side of that needle it's very interesting design. Binary is an interesting language. Alias Galen was an interesting fellow or <laughs> group of them. It's been an interesting journey, to say the least. Every day is, is another day of, of revelation, another day of learning and experience. From the Contra County, oops, ContraCostaTimes.com, sorry about that, looks like uh, Costa Rica. San Mateo County DA judge charge of DUI had 0 0.12 blood alcohol content. Redwood City, a San Mateo County judge arrested on suspicion of DUI late last month, was charged with the crime when the district attorney learned his blood alcohol content was 0.12%, one and a half times the legal limit. Assistant presiding judge Joseph Scott, 63, was charged with misdemeanor driving under the influence Wednesday, more than two weeks after he was pulled over for swerving between lanes on northbound Highway 101. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. District Attorney Steve Wagstaff said the second highest ranking judge in the county was alone in his car 
when he was stopped around 12.30 a.m. May 24, the Woodside Road, the judge was reportedly asked to step out of the car when the Redwood City police officer smelled alcohol in his breath. Like Staff said, he failed both a sobriety test and a blood alcohol test that acts similar to a breathalyzer. That sounds creepy. Creepy. Interesting days. From NGA.com, judge charged with hindering his boyfriend's arrest, questions authenticity of evidence. Of course, she's going to practice law here, which is unlawful on its face. Okay, any sheriffs want to take that one up. Take it out of the hands of the federal state there. The... From the online WSJ.com, Spanish judge recommends Princess Christina be charged in corruption probe. Isn't it interesting that attorneys have uh, jurisdiction over kingdoms? <laughs> although, although they teach all of the children to believe in these concepts, if a lawyer can charge... Or a bank can charge a princess or a king's anything with a crime. That means that the attorney is actually the king and the king is not sovereign. And in this instance, of course, the royal families are played by actors and actresses relative to Queen Elizabeth, who lives now in the, quote, United Kingdom, which is... Which is an oxymoron under Congress. <laughs> you know, daily, you think that this stuff is crazy if you're hearing it for, for the first time. And it's absolutely astounding to me that we could be so duped for so long of periods as we're being doped up through the food pyramid, the food bag that they feed everybody. Wrap around their faces like horses or a food trough that a pig eats out of. That is the FDA food pyramid. It's telling you what you require for your productive day-to-day -day, uh, work. Or echo, no, ergo, sorry ergonomically correct chairs is good for the world laws of work it's not good for humanity erg means law and nomics mean or work sorry and nomics means law assuming from the word nom and so everybody's sitting in chairs that are making them more productive rather than making them feel better If it had spikes in it, would you sit there if it made you work better? Come on. You wear ties. Those things are collars. They're, they're collars. Your, your employer there has a collar around your neck. You have a human resource department, for Christ's sake. But you're not a farm animal. <laughs> oh, boy. From the WashingtonPost.com. Italian priest charges soliciting sexual favors from desperate refugees. Of course they did. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses <laughs> yearning to be free. I only prey on the meek. I only want the meek. I only can own the meek. I cannot own sovereign states of beings. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. I need slaves. I don't want any of those sovereign states. Do you hear me? <laughs> this thing is so profoundly disgusting and disturbing. Disturbing. It's disturbing. It makes my skin crawl. As I know these attorneys and their agents are out there still moving around and about the kingdom. Flat attack.
they are lurking in your kingdom. These things are preying on you and your children. It's yucky to see, as Todd would say, or icky. These are icky days. Icky stuff. Let me bring up some more stories, folks. Sorry about that. I didn't want to do a bunch of clicking, and yet, in the end, you hear clicking. I, mean, I had one come across my day that was concerning. Um, everything else is going as normal, and they're cannibalizing agents and minions left and right. However, there's a special little attorney down in Austin, Texas here, um, from bizjournals.com, Austin attorney faces prostitution charge, but it's after a sex trafficking scheme. Now, he's only facing prostitution, but he was actually human trafficking. So his buddies there that are doing it with him are, you know, they're facilitating peacetime relations. They're entered into contract to abuse your children, to rape and molest them, to traffic them. And if they need to put on a show for you to show you that they're the good guys, someone will volunteer to take one for the team, won't they? And he's got a really purdy smile there on that article. But he's been... He's been human trafficking. He's not to be charged for that under prostitution under 27 CFR 72.11. He's to be charged for that under the public law, which the United States Incorporated does not have jurisdiction over. So they condemn their courts and evidence that they do not uphold the public law in any way, shape, or form, as all they do is prey on men, women, and children. Public law says do no harm upon humanity. Public being humanity as a whole. And under the restricted principle of sovereign immunity, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, 28 U.S.C. subsection or chapter 97 it says they don't have any immunity. They don't have any sovereignty. They're a foreign state, foreign nations. That's what makes them a foreign state, foreign nation. That's what disallows their immunity and disallows their sovereignty is the simple fact that they have harmed an evidence to be harming in consortium, in confederacy in compact with each other. Peace. They are a corrupt organization called the Confederacy. That's what it's defined as in Black's Law Dictionary. Black's Law Dictionary First Edition defines Confederacy as a criminal enterprise, otherwise known as a conspiracy. It's just a uh, Interesting that uh, these attorneys there would be voluntarily taking the fall and making sure that uh, their buddies there were well protected from the observing eye. Of course. Don't want to be revealed now, do we? That's not good for business. <laughs> that would mean Babel Falls. Jesus said, come like a thief in the night. You're supposed to be surprised now. Ta-da! From the New York Post.com, Assemblyman's Lawyer in DUWI arrest. So this one's interesting because they're shaking a hand down. They're going after his attorney. They're going to protect their attorney first. Oh, did I ruin that plot? Again. Come on. It's like 
how many scripts out there. There's not very many scripts. Not very many scripts. Next time you gotta get better scribes. Priests. Pharisee. Because, man, they're just... <coughs> Why they're foul. Unclean foul. Yeah. Absolutely. So very, very interesting days. Very interesting days. So this Italian priest is charged in Rome, by the way. So the Pope is putting on this show, too. And he's saying, oh, no, I'm your father. Come back. Come back. I'll read the story. The Catholic Church in Italy is facing an embarrassing scandal after the arrest of a priest accused of demanding sexual favors from immigrants seeking political asylum in Sicily. Reverend Sergio Librizi, who is also the director of the Catholic charity Caritas in the Sicilian city of Trapani, was arrested at his parish on Tuesday as he was preparing for Mass. Oh, isn't that a presentation? Come on. <laughs> Privateer's got one of your thugs, man. No, this isn't Revelation or anything. These are very, very interesting dates. Very. <clears throat> so, um, we went through peace, uh, Oh, there's some YouTube trolls cyber stalking bow now, and it's so funny because they're 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 failing. Uh, one of them tempted video today, and then he made it private. It's, it's gonna get him a lot of responses. <laughs> so so it, it only evidences, <clears throat> sir, that uh, you're a cyber stalker, and that by invitation only, your cyber stalker buddies are going to like what you're creating. It's, it's interesting how the mind works when you go into states of fear. Getting caught is something that's is profound. Especially if you're caught by your own works and actions. It's always a sad thing. It doesn't really sneak up on you. It feels like it sneaks up on you. Accountability sneaks up on you. But your works and actions were already done, and just if you know what you've done already, you can expect the, the result in an equal measure. You are to be held accountable in your works. So that means equal measure. So if you've been tricking out human beings as farm animals, you can expect that you'll be tricked out. Uh, and that's the neat part. Is that you only get what you put out. Um, so you don't have to be worried here. Because <laughs> you're only going to get what you put out. Interesting. Story. And the... Um, oops. I'm trying to get to the link. Dailymail.co.uk Doctors say patient parents and schools are pushing them to label children who are just shy or bookish as mentally ill. Oh, come on. I studied so much throughout time seeking titles. Okay, when a school is diagnosing children, they're diagnosing children. Uh, at the behest of psychiatrists. So the psychiatrists are the directors. The psychiatrists are still the same directors of the same Hitler youth camps that have always been. The educational system is the Hitler youth camps. The psychiatrists rely on diagnosis in order to manipulate your children in order to mold them into productive members of a society. 
I urge everybody to read the book Psychiatrists, The Men Behind Hitler, written by Thomas Roder. Of course, I'm going to quote out of one of those books, if I can get it to open. Chapter 5, Useless Bread Gobblers, SS Slang. If we look back at the numerous paths the various currents of activity took in the first three decades of the 20th century, we see that in the 30s they gradually amalgamated and a trend emerged in a certain direction, which was sterilization of the mentally ill, Nuremberg laws, etc., which was striving to, quote, even greater heights, end quote. The German racial and mental hygienists had prepared the ground for an all-embracing project, which they called the, quote, euthanasia program, end quote, but would more accurately have been called mass murder of mental patients. In 1921, the professors Dr. Erwin Bauer, Dr. Eugen Fischer, and Dr. Fritz Lentz jointly published the first edition of their two-volume book, quote, Human Hereditary Teaching and Racial Hygiene, end quote, which was intentionally recognized as a standard textbook and was soon even used in universities abroad. They are teaching you to dehumanize and kill each other. I'll continue reading. In the second volume by Dr. Lentz, first professor for hygiene in Germany, that chair was established in 1923 at Munich University, entitled, quote, Human Selection and Racial Hygiene, parenthesis, eugenics, end parenthesis, quote. He wrote, quote, A real restoration to health of the race cannot begin without generous measures and the organization of social racial hygiene. But these are most only introduced when that racial hygienic idea has become the popular knowledge of the population, or at least of the mental leaders. There must first develop a feeling for the senselessness of a civilization which allows the race to decay, an order of society and economics which has no regard for the interests of eternal life, which in fact is often detrimental to politics. The introduction of racial hygienic education in the secondary schools and high schools and universities could effectively counter this illiteracy, parenthesis, lack of education, and parenthesis. Unfortunately, this will only be possible when the importance of racial hygiene has become known in the right places. As long as this is not the case, the most important practical duty of racial hygiene is the private promulgation of racial hygienic ideas. As soon as racial hygienic conviction has become a living ideology, then the racial hygienic organization of life, even public life, will happen by itself. Anyone who loves his race cannot wish for it to fall into decadence, says the psychiatrist, psychopath. I'll continue reading, quote, he must realize the industriousness of the race in the first and unrelenting condition for the thriving of the race. You gotta find out how productive that thing could be, says the psychiatrist. Quote, 
even the fight for freedom and self-assertion of the race, must in the final instance serve the race. They are selling you the concepts of rights and benefits after they steal them from you through the action of psychiatry. This is otherwise known as psychological warfare. It is not covert. It is not hidden. It is called public education. It is called education, which is stemming from the word pedagogy, meaning education or attendance on boys. You are under fire from psychological warfare. You are inside of the war. You are a victim of the war against you, perpetrated by Congress. Eugenics did not start in Germany. Germany finally agreed in the latter 1920s, and Hitler signed it into effect with the 1933 Act of Enablement. The eugenics program started with the United States Incorporated, the United States of America, which is Congress. It is not the human race. Psychopaths do not have a frontal lobe. They are a devolved species. The human being with empathy and compassion and the frontal lobe is the evolved species. The psychopath is not the same race as the human race. It has called out for racial cleansing of the human race. That's what eugenics refers to. As the psychiatrist talk in the third person, that psychiatrist is describing the human race as a detriment to its race. That means that it's evidence himself in documentation as being a psychopath. You must stop calling it your father. It is killing you. I don't care about speeding tickets, agents. Don't, don't contact me about speeding tickets and the right to travel. Stop asking for rights and benefits from the freaking murderer. It's absolutely horrifying. On my blog, <coughs> I wrote an article the other day regarding these things. Doctor says Hitler youth camps are directing the drugs. They are not. The schools are not innocent. There's a principal agent working the wheel of the school. It's called a principal. It's a principal agent. It's trained to adhere to national security, to the demise of children, human children. You've got a fourth grade teacher there. Whatever that thing is, it's trained to harm your children. That's at the removal of the self. If the child is brought up through kindergarten through third grade, being taught that it's a good girl or a good boy, and in the fourth grade, it is taught that it is bad in some way. It gets penalized. It starts to uh, be terrorized after it was built up. Get them out of public schools. This is human behavior modification studies, programs. As an example, recently as last year, Bogles did a study as well as other psychiatrists and he was promoting blushing as a sign of child abuse for example what does that mean well you're watching the television programming then you're turning around to your child and you're telling your child all about stranger danger scary stuff whoa scary stuff you don't want to be seen the minute they enter into preschool then or kindergarten or another realm of education, they are shy. They are going to exhibit behaviorisms that evidence that they're shy. They're, they're 
they're taught to to fear others, so they're shy. They don't want to be seen. That refers to 90% of the children out there that these psychiatrists are claiming dibs on by saying that blushing is a sign of mental disorder. This opens an entirely new realm of legal kidnapping. A new realm, a new market condition. How many kids can they take off of their families in this way? Trick them out through the psychological industry. If you don't stop buying into all of these titles and diagnosis, you, you, I've been speaking to you this whole time, you risk extinction. Because there's another race that called out for your extinction. 1974, Kissinger came in with the Memorandum 200 and said depopulation was the highest priority. That is our highest priority. I'm directing now. This is the highest priority, depopulation. By 1975, he had put in play the Office of Population Affairs, which is the Department of Health and Human Services. That is the depopulation program itself. You're running out to be diagnosed. They're saying, yep, you're nuts. Oh, my God, you're really nuts. Oh, this one's really nuts. Okay, then what? Then they can hospitalize an entire race of human beings, either in institutionalized states through psychopathy or um, uh, psychology, criminology, or hospital settings. There's no other form of production. You consume what they tell you to consume. That makes you sick. You need to be fixed from being sick from what they told you to consume. They're killing you and then offering you a remedy on the other hand. Back and forth. Back and forth. You're just a little puppet. Now, television programming has you so indoctrinated that you, you're so easy to move. You don't need any strings. You you do it all yourself. But that's what is said in chapter five about the useless bread gobblers. That's what your government has called you. Yesterday, corporate council was really ramping it up against cops and. Uh, that uh, video that came out of the little child, and you can find it on Bono's Entertainment, of course. Baby critically in burned during no knock SWAT raid, and we we have been covering this. However, the CIA and whoever attorneys have gone on to um, provide us with an update. And I'll start reading the presentation here because it's actually quite uh, long. From salon.com, and of course, this is going to evidence salon, everybody, just in case you had any questions. <laughs> Quote, a SWAT team blew a hole in my two-year-old son update. So they're, they're using the victimization of this child in every manner possible. Quote, after our house burned down in Wisconsin a few months ago, my husband and I packed our four young kids and all our belongings into a gold minivan and drove to my sister-in-law's place just as out of Atlanta. On the back windshield, we, packed, we pasted six stick figures, a dad, a mom, three young girls, and one baby boy. Okay, now here's the state government coming in with the kids to elicit, invoke your response. I'll continue reading. That minivan was sitting in the front driveway of my sister-in-law's place that night. A SWAT team broke in, looked for a small amount of drugs. They thought my husband's nephew had. Some of my kids' toys were in the front yard. But the officers claimed they had no way of knowing children might be present. Our whole family was sleeping in the same room. One bed for us, one bed for the girls in a crib. After the SWAT team broke down the door, they threw a flashbang grenade inside. It landed in my son's crib. Flashbangs, grenades, were created for soldiers for use during battle. And I'll stop there.
That is absolutely dead on correct. And what had happened that night is corporate counsel told the cops that they were expecting a war. Law enforcement can only follow policy and procedure, protocol. They were told that they were facing a war and they armed themselves accordingly. They were not told by corporate counsel who knows you have children that there were children in that home. SWAT did not harm your baby. Corporate counsel did. Corporate counsel must, 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 must be held accountable. They are looking for diagnosis. I personally evidence this in my conversation with Scott K. Summers. You can find that on Bono's Entertainment on YouTube, where I talked to corporate counsel, and corporate counsel said that they require a diagnosis before they can discharge congressional bankruptcy. Corporate counsel knew how the cops were going to react. If they were told that they were facing a war, they knew that somebody was going to be injured and brought into law. They are the ones cashing in on this lay off of law enforcement. They are following policy, procedure, and protocol directed to them from corporate counsel. Corporate counsel has been slaughtering, raping, molesting, and getting away with it since time immemorial. And now it's time to hold the attorney accountable. It's works. The name Barabbas stems from the word for son of the master. Barabbas in the Bible, of course, is referred to as a murderer. The action of a turn means to pay homage to another Lord God. The attorney is son of the master. The attorney is the murderer Barabbas that you continuously pause and ask to represent you rather than crucifying him on that cross. And until you hold Barabbas accountable, you're leaving Jesus there. You must stop this from occurring. From the RTE dot i e ireland former u.s attorney in court on pornography charges a former u.s attorney accused of having 646 images of child abuse material will face trial at sligo circuit court gerard gilligan 60 was flown to ireland with garda escort from new york earlier this week he appeared before sligo district court this morning where he was returned for trial on july 28th he is charged with downloading the images at an address in Union Place, Sligo. The court heard that Mr. Gilligan has dual U.S. and Irish citizenship. Guard Inspector Paul Killicoyne, in objecting to Bell, said Mr. Gilligan was of no fixed address. The charge against him was serious and there was strong evidence to support the prosecution's case. Mr. Gilligan, a New Jersey-born father of four, told the court that he qualified as an attorney in 1979 and practiced for 20 years. He told the court that he was, quote, applying for bail to be at large to participate in preparation of my own defense rather than sitting behind bars and having no role in it, end quote. He said he was in partnership with a person in Mayo in an internet marketing business. Prosecuting counsel Hugh Sheridan, who said the book of evidence was served before the court this morning, told Judge Kelvin Kelrain he was hoping for an early trial as it was not particu a particularly long case. But defense counsel Keith O'Grady said the alleged offenses occurred over five years ago on March 2009, which is the practice of law. A statute of limitations does not exist. That is the practice of law, and he should be held in contempt of court. We'll be back after the breaks, folks. Stick around.
And we're back for the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. Where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. We're also broadcasting tonight on No Borders Radio right here at TammyPepperman.org. You can find my blog and all sorts of new doodads to um, play with thanks to Ben. Otherwise, I wouldn't have this new venue, which seems to be allowing me to work much, much, much more efficiently. So this week, if you're studying um, fracking, and um, the most interesting things, let me bring up that um, paper, uh, because it's actually from your government. And what had happened is on my news feed, I love my news feed. Came across a story that looked like a rumor. And it said that fracking was a means of disposing of radioactive waste. And that was its purpose. So I said, nah. And of course, all of our listeners know me. So I went out to uh, determine whether or not that was true. And, um... I found out immediately that it was true. It took me about probably 15, 20 minutes to uh, find the uh, written documentation. This one's from the U.S. Geological Survey professional paper, Raymond Quadrangle, Madera, Mariposa Counties, California, and a little called Data, Geological Survey professional paper, 1, 2, 1, Four. Although it says that on its jacket, but then on the page I'm looking at, it said this volume is bound without 1219, which is or are unavailable, which is interesting. So removal of evidence. And if this wasn't bad enough, of course, whatever they're hiding, I, I didn't think after I found this evidence that anything could be worse than, you know, pretty much living on a nuclear waste dump. Because, you know, humans are not as important as psychopaths according to the psychopaths. And we need to be diagnosed in order to discharge congressional bankruptcy, according to Scott K. Summers, corporate counsel attorney, conservator for McHenry County, Illinois, which happens to be one of the United States in the Confederacy. Very interesting days. So go find that, everybody. I found it on Google. Uh, everything's in there. There's a shorter quip at Wiley Online. Uh, theoretical size of hydraulically induced horizontal fractures and corresponding surface uplift in an idealized medium. The first sentence says what this book is about. Quote, for the disposal of radioactive waste by hydraulic fracturing and grout injection, it is considered essential that the induced fractures be nearly horizontal. There you go. Fracking is a design to allow and enable the disposal of radioactive waste and the depth and overall structural protocol is directed by the same corporation that directs all of your other ways of death and dying and misery and diagnosis and injury and repair. Discharging that congressional bankruptcy, one human being after another. That's what they do. 
slated you all for death, but you're fearing death. That's why you're not standing up. What What if something happens to me? Wait a second. They've already scheduled you for that. It might be wise to stand up. <laughs> Fear is a mind killer, uh, and that's why you're taught the concept of death. You're more important than any other human being on this planet. Only you exist, therefore you should protect that life at all costs, according to the Lord God. <laughs> I think I've got Bo with me. How are you, Bo? I'm pretty good. How are you? Good. Talking about that, uh, hi baby, talking about that, um, uh, fracking, and, and I know that's one of your pet peeves. What do you think? Well, all of this stuff that they're doing and paint it with nice words and, you know, come up with a way to sell it to you, ram it down your throat, so to speak, and it's, it's, it's like any congressional act or bill that they pass uh, none of it's good none of it and yet they sell it to you like it's so nice and so good and, and there you go in the first sentence um, about hydraulic fracking from uh, you know what people call their government and they're telling you well yeah this is how we get rid of uh, nuclear waste and so it's going to be seeping into the, the water tables and up through the earth. And and I even hypothesized that uh, it could be why they were trying to promote global warming as a coming thing, you know, back in the early as the 70s, you know, with Carl Sagan, uh, is that they, they knew that this uh, introduction of, you know, extra... Uh, nuclear energy into the Earth's crust is going to, you know, eventually heat up the planet. Right, and it's done intentionally because environmentalism is the way and means and mechanism to redistribute corporatism, which is a corporation. So if they blame the corporations and not the government, then they could raise the corporations. Right. It, it, it's it's all like a soft sell way of uh, Doing selling business. you their, their 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 yeah their business model, which is uh, you know basically to uh, uh, harm humanity. Uh, it's not a good business model for the human being. It's good for corporations. Works out Sometimes. real well for them. Sometimes because the federal state or Rome. Uh, has been reclaiming the national state or the counties or these corporations since the 1974 Reclamation Act, after they indoctrinated everybody to believe in environmentalism, although they are causing the earthquakes, they are causing the fracking earthquakes, they are causing the earthquakes by the diesel technology. They are yeah, causing, when they want to. Now, they do also occur as a result of uh, some natural tectonic activity right. shifting around, and of course the the sun, the sun when it emits solar flares, inducts extra electromagnetic energy, which is transferred into kinetic energy, and moves these tectonic plates around as well. So, but they can is the point, and you discovered this with. Uh, you know, your uh, unraveling of the Dussel coil technology uh, in use, I believe, in the state of Washington somewhere. Right. It, it's used all over. It's the Dussel coil itself, and that is uh, put in place to maintain and create such as earthquakes and volcanic activity because of the level of of um, frequency that's running through the coil itself into the granite, they can allow a shaking to the extent that it'll cause uh, volcanic activity as well. And then, of course, we know they're controlled with the cloud seeding programs, their control of water, where water falls, how it re reacts, how it behaves, where it goes. They control all of this through geoengineering. Yes, and the point of the matter is that uh, everybody wants to 
think it's a big mystery and uh, a big conspiracy plot to uncover when it's right in front of your very eyes when you go to grants.gov and look at the funding under cloud seeding. It's right there. You know, and that, that was part of my gripe with Dutch Sense is that, you know, it's not a big mystery about how this stuff occurs. The funding is right there. You, you search cloud seeding and you'll come up with names like U.S. Army, uh, other military, uh, DARPA. Science, which is all under, um, you know, such as RAND, the Department of Defense. Everybody needs to realize that that is the folks, the editors of your school textbooks, is the Department of Defense, Rand McNally. That is the same Rand. They just, they're in confederacy with somebody else at that point. You need to realize and, and, and see for yourself what is happening. If you are being educated by your enemy, and your enemy's teachers, doctors, and attorneys. Your enemy is winning because you are being a malleable product. Well, yeah, we have all of this indoctrination, and then we have all basically the people that uh, first wake up and they turn right around, you know, right to their constitution, uh, their constitution, they call it. It was never about the constitution for us. It says we the people. is written by Congress. What's that got to do with the people? We're talking about us, the Congress. That also is right in front of your face. But they don't tell you that in school. They say, no, they were talking about the people. Of course they were. You know, no, they just, let you infer it. See, they never speak a lie. They let you infer the answer, and that's how they get away with this. With no, I specifically remember my high school junior high history teachers saying that we the people was talking about the people right because that's and i just bought it because he's supposedly uh they're supposedly the teachers right, right. you're supposed but to the respect, their respect their authority but he's the one that's interpreting the text see he's inferring that that it refers to humanity as well so we don't know the guilt or the level of of uh, guilt of such as that teacher until you have further evidence because it most of the time you know we've all bumped into this kind of thing you know we learn stuff repeat stuff and then all of a sudden how can that be even possible on that and of course that's what started me on this journey there's so many things where you know you learn something from a, a quote reputable source, and then you turn around and you find out that's the opposite of what it actually is, and then you start divesting from there. And it, you know, it, it takes it's a long journey. It's an interesting journey, but um, you know, I'd, so far the guilt I've seen with the educational system uh, is the principal and the fourth grade teachers. And I've seen that over and over again. One of them was actually Thomas Herb's mother, the one that had choked Thomas Herb's. And uh, she was actually said to be a sexually abusive, all of these things, and she's still working as a teacher. And the court protected her outside of any um, realm where you could see any evidence that she was not the perpetrator. I mean, Sure, that's called specialization. Right. You know, that's not really that much different than when you have uh, somebody like Steve Quayle that is endorsing Dutch sense. Right. Yeah, that makes him look less like an agent. Well, he doesn't like it. <laughs> he doesn't like it when I use his name either. He says, you know, by name, you're using, you're referring to me by name, you know, he says on his. Well, he looks like a duck. Well, he's defending like a duck, title. A duck. I know, it's so funny. You know, I. It, it, you're known by he, your works and actions. He didn't want to argue any of the substance. Mm -mm. They can't. He's an agent. And it's so funny, you know. They send him a horse, is a horse, of course, of course. I like that one. Right, and of course, you know, no, it's it's not calling out your goon squad when when you get. Uh, and I watched this happen in real time because I was doing notes before the show and I'm watching the YouTube feeds and, you know, here comes Dutch Sense and he, you know, uh, 
leaves this comment and I got it right away. It happened to be right there. And then, uh, you know, it wasn't, you know, five, six, seven minutes later. And he's got like seven thumbs up on his, uh, comment. Right. And, uh, he wants to play that off like it could just happen, you know, normally. Right. And, and then we go to that one uh, video that was pointing them out as cyber stalkers. And who do they list? Seven agents. Yeah. Including Tattoo, Dutch Sense, Monograph, and four others. I can't remember. Agent somebody. That's funny. But, and they just released that recently about Obama's camp, too. They were doing the same thing. Liking Facebook and Twitter accounts and things like that. Uh, yeah. Michelle Obama's <laughs> got like, uh, you know, most of her Twitter followers, like 80% of them are just non-existent right. accounts. Just agent accounts. Some number, some ridiculously high number. And you see the number of views on these uh, channels like uh, Agent Dutch. And he's got, uh, you know thousands and thousands of subscribers, you know, and all these people that are, you know, praising him and just, you know, bowing down before his feet. It's oh, funny. you're the greatest Dutch. It's so funny to watch, though. And, and you know what's going on because, uh, uh, I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then tattooed, so, he, yeah, he comes up with some video in response to, because I threw out Revelation 1815, of course, the merchants are wailing, and, you know, he went and stomped his feet and made like a 41-minute video or something <laughs> like that. I just saw it in the feed, and I meant to get to it. By the time I got to it, it was made private already. It's, it's so funny. He used the F word in my uh, show, uh, my uh, YouTube handle, uh endearment so it's so funny he has your fee schedule too yeah oh that's funny so he wanted to contract apparently maybe he thought twice about it and made it private after that in order not to contract that is funny who knows i i don't know i just go forward with the the, the truth is it's been evidence to be that we're dealing with a a criminal enterprise here that uh People want to pound you into that peg hole that, uh, you know, that they made you to fit into and, you know, either be a patriot or a Democrat or Republican. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, I mean, I guess patriot can be a Democrat or Republican, uh, Tea Party, uh, one of these titles, uh, labels, you know, if you're a patriot, uh, you know, you, you, you have the appearance of going against them, but you're really uh, playing right into their schematic, aren't you? You're really just being a, another good tool to be uh, turned right into a negotiable instrument to offset congressional bankruptcy. That's what the business is. That's that's all they do, and and um, it has been just so profound. Um, you know, to, to stand up here and realize everything that has occurred. And then all of these ancient agents, they're, they're scrambling. They're in chaos. Like I said, somebody sent me a peace compact, you know. Why don't you talk about that a little bit, about the meaning of peace day. and why one really shouldn't want peace? Well, it stems from the word pax, P-A-X, and it means a pact or promise. Pledge. And that is exactly what this business relies on. It relies on your promise to produce for it by patriotism. They pledged you back at the Articles of Confederation, Article 12. They pledged and charged you to discharge congressional bankruptcy. And, you know, all of their actions of peace are just agreements or mutual agreements on this massive voyage that they're harming humanity on and bringing them into law with through all of these mechanisms of the corporation and they they color it all under peace the word peace but peace was never a good word i do not want peace 
I don't enter into agreements or contracts with a criminal enterprise. Yeah. Pax. P A X, you said? Yeah. Pax. Another pledge, another way to get you pledged in. Uh, put on the hook for the congressional bankruptcy, right? Yep. That's all it ever was. No, it's just, it's, uh, it's been on a weird journey. So we did cover fracking. Um, we covered corporate council ramps it up. I forgot to um, send everybody over to uh, Bono's Entertainment, uh, Hillary Clinton, Child Predator. Uh, Hillary's been evidenced now to be nothing but a predator. You know, and that, that, those are her works. That's, that's in her own hand. And I guess from what it looks like, you know, you've got both sides out there of Senate and the House and all of their little minions jumping around, and, you know, some are for her is a lot more against her. I, I was watching the, um, the YouTube channel in regards to Hillary Clinton on your site, Bo, and I don't see anybody disagreeing with you, which is, it's amazing because everybody else witnessed the same thing. Yeah, exactly. CNN's uh, pumping her and the major media networks are having all these interviews and uh, they're just putting her face out there again. And I guess they're just waiting to see what the people's reactions are. But all the reactions I've seen on the comments and, you know, CNN stuff been thumbs down, thumbs down. And, yeah, I put out that one about her being a child predator and – about a first court case, and uh, we got nothing but thumbs up on that. Yeah, and it's beautiful because the presentations on the other side, the mainstream media, of course, is run by John Forbes Carey, the Board of Governors there, Broadcasting Board of Governors. And and I got to remind everybody, you know, she's a former Secretary of State. She's a former clearinghouse, same position. She was once on the Broadcasting Board of Governors pitching her feminist crap. This is what they do, but from all appearances, now the, the mainstream included, there, there's not any humanity that likes uh, Hillary. Uh, I would think not. I mean, wouldn't I you really know what the Clintons are about? And, you know, Bill, and of course they're there's a synergistic effect when you get uh, um, more than one of one kind together. When you got uh, uh, two like Bill and Hillary, then, you know, it's not twice as bad. It's like more like three times as bad. Right. Because they're in consortium. Yeah. They're just a tag team uh, psychopathic business conglomerate. And she was saying that she was so poor, she was broke when she left the White House, and then everybody came up with, like, millions of dollars, and that's her definition of suffering and broke, which was very, very profound to see. Somebody made some comical videos. I saw one that uh, was, was the, you know, uh, save Hillary Clinton uh, <laughs> campaign. They were take, going around getting... getting uh, Donations. See if they can get some donations for old poor Hillary, because she was just she's just broke, you know, and hasn't got very much money, and they left the White House broke, and yeah. you know, of course, they make millions of dollars with Bill's speeches alone, and so you know, if people can just chip in, you know, a few million <laughs> here and there. <laughs> Save the Hillary and the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, we don't, we don't, um, want, we don't want her going hungry or almost. Of course, we got Boehner. You know, he's coming out and saying he's going to charge, he's going to sue Obama. Absolutely. Because uh, they're violating, he's violating the constitutional rights of Congress. <laughs> that's what I said. I, I mean, that's what the story says. I kid you not. It's, it's just absolutely amazing how they're... They're turning on each other, you know, because the, the attorney in chief is the one that's supposed to be 
maintaining everything under control. It's all under control. The intelligence is is set on course of duty and and everything. The indoctrination is going according to plan, and it, it's not. Everything is absolutely in failure, and they're turning on the attorney in chief who works for Congress. They're making Congress's fall guy the fall guy, and and I don't think that's fair. Well, let me go back. All is fair in love and war. Okay, first of all. I'm not here pushing for peace. Um, I want humanity to be well. Now, as an attorney, Obama is, is disgusting. As attorney in chief, he's disgusting, all of that thing, those things. But he is not the directors. The Board of Governors are the directors. The general counsel, the corporation counsel, those are the directors. And I want the directors and the psychiatrists more than anything to be in Gitmo. And the attorney in chief, yes, he should be held accountable, but um, certainly not for violating Congress's rights. They don't have any. They're, they're absolutely uh, civilly dead entities. They're all fictions. They've been evidenced to be nothing but murderers rapists and pedophiles and so they they don't get uh, any amount of mercy at any time now or in the future so then we had carrie okay uh that was sick i sent you that, that video earlier on carrie well what'd you think what was your take on that oh it was sick so here they are hardballing in the Ukraine and Russia again, and of course, he's actually evidencing himself in that video, I forgot what the link was, um, to be uh, admitting to being nothing but a thug, using Congress as a thug, using law enforcement as future, or um, as thugs, and to be maintaining under the con uh, Confederacy uh, shaking them down and getting them to agree. And he's saying this all on record all at the same time in that one video. Do you remember what the link was? Because I wanted to give that link out to the listeners as well. Um, uh, let's see. It was on Mary Greeley's YouTube channel. She covered it, I know. And okay, so I just need to go over to... There's, uh, you know, and now there's all this uh, commotion about ISIS and Iraq and now... But on the serious side of it, Obama wants to send ISIS, you know, I forget how many millions of dollars to help fight uh, Syria, you know. And uh, so we got a, another, uh, another, right. another dialectic there. Uh, right. Absolutely. And Mary Greeley's channel can be found at M A R Y space G R E E L E Y on YouTube. Just search Mary Greeley. Yeah, I'm sure. It does. And that story was. Carrie tells Russia to disarm Ukraine separatists in hours. In hours. And so Carrie's he's calling the shots as the clearinghouse. He's the one that clears the books for Congress. So he's over there being a thug, and, and I urge everybody to go listen to this story. Well, these guys are all thugs, shaking us all down globally since 1941 Atlantic Charter. That's right. what it comes down to. But in this one, Carrie's actually evidencing it this yeah. time, which was amazing to hear and to witness. You can witness it, their actions um, as they have occurred, and I'm thankful that you know you listen to Mary Creeley. Well, she just covers the news uh, pretty straight, uh, not a lot of commentary. Unfortunately, she's still kind of caught up on that constitutional side of things. But, I mean, we all start out somewhere. I mean, heck, that's where I started. And, and it took me a couple times reading that thing, you know, to before I even got it that, uh, you know, hey, wait a minute. Uh, when What's this Bill of Rights stuff about here? Uh how do they have the authority to sell us these rights in the first place? Oh, they stole them from us. That's how. Right. 
They have to take them. They have to raise everything in order to... And they never even did that. They just kind of bullied their way and said, yeah, we're going to grant you these rights. And people said, okay, yep. that sounds real good. Congress is good. That must be a good thing. Well, when you look at the etymology of the word Congress, con is with, and grass comes the word comes from the word transgression. These are with transgression. These are our transgressors. And uh, they come along in 1941, got world dominion. And, uh, you know, it's no wonder we see the rise of the police state uh, unilaterally throughout the globe. Right? I mean, you're, we're getting reports uh, of people that have moved to Hong Kong and say they got more uh, freedoms over there. Uh, they enjoy more personal freedom than they do here. Right, because they sell the the um, the uh, orders to China. China's uh, populace oh. is backed by the human productivity through the court system, and so it allows the welfare state to occur, and that's the action and function of the Sister Kivaya Trust. So and we evidence that with that judge that we had a uh, conversation with Nader, Naden, right. Nadu, yeah, Nadu, and. He was a federal judge, and he said, yeah, he was proud of the fact that we sell the judgments yeah, over to us. China for 50 cents on a dollar. Boy, right. it's good business. And that's as we were doing the case last year just before we laid down the final orders. He was telling us to sell the order to China. Well, we can't enter into a criminal enterprise. So our court has to act as to a public law. That's it. And so we couldn't sell our orders to China. We couldn't sell them to anybody. We can't enter into contract with a criminal organization misrepresenting itself as something other. And so we had to follow through with that and facilitate the court and follow everything, you know, uh, on course in order to get the results that we wanted. But um, it, was, it was funny to see that shoe show up and sell us a concept. And, you know, of course, it's always beautiful when we realize and we decline those offers. And, and again, he evidenced himself an attorney, not a judge, Absolutely. because he was entered into treaties. He trying to turn us back over <laughs> to the federal state, wasn't he? Yeah, telling us to enter into treaties with him. Just sign treaties with him. No, I'm not part of the criminal enterprise. That's what I'm saying, folks. And none of these judges that you call judges are evidencing themselves to be anything other than attorneys. And it's been that way since... 1789 at least, and the Judiciary Act, when you look at that, it, it's talking about how it, uh, it brings you in, and you might be uh, in, in the state of Michigan, say, for example, and, uh, you know, the, the, the connections there are through uh, one of the 13 colonies. So you're standing there in court. It depends on what day of the year you go into court, whether or not you're located in North or New Hampshire or Virginia or Pennsylvania, that's the banking schematic. That's how that, it's a routing system, a, a bank routing system. And it says it right in the 1789 Judiciary Act. Yeah, so here we are, the 1789 Judiciary Act itself is evidence that they created these places of business, which are courts of ball, which is the word uh, bail, where that comes from, and you're paying for your rights. You're, 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 you're trying to uh, buy your rights through court process, buy your uh, title of a good boy or a good girl through court process. Let's get into some news here, I guess. We've got some time. Former... Venezuelan opposition lawmaker Martel charged with tax fraud calls charges a game. This is from foxnews.com. Uh, Car Caracas, Venezuela. Venezuela's attorney general is charging a former opposition lawmaker with a host of crimes, including tax fraud. Officials announced the charges against Richard Mardo in Caracas Wednesday. The 44-year-old Mardo denies the accusations and says they are part of a political game. The National Assembly, controlled by allies of Socialist President Nicolas Maduro, stripped Maduro of parliamentary immunity from prosecution last July. The opposition calls in a trumped-up attempt to silence a 
critic. In addition to tax fraud, Marto is charged with money laundering and hiding some income sources. Right. This is uh, Congress. They're going after their clergy and everybody else who's been working for them called Parliament. And this has been interesting to watch go down because the Senate down there, remember, this is the Philippines. The president's already gotten up and he said, I'll stand in front of my Senate. And then they've been going back and forth and playing this huge, humongous political game in front of the sheeple to see what the sheeple think. But ultimately, these senators are being held accountable for plunder, but only if the sheeple stand up and say, yes, I don't rep they don't represent me. I, I don't want criminals around me. I don't want to participate. No more tree of knowledge. Stop feeding me fruit from the tree of knowledge. Just get away from me. And um, it's, it's been interesting to watch this play out and how much uh, of a production this has become in the Philippines. And goes on to say, in recent months, several opposition leaders have been targeted in the courts. They include Leopoldo Lopez, who has been jailed since February, and former opposition lawmaker Maria Coronilla Machado. So, oh, this, this political cannibalization through the court system here is... Uh, been going on. They jailed one guy. He's been in jail since February. Right. That's there's, pretty funny. There's another one going on um, down there at the same time this week. You know, they had some not guilty pleas and and everything else going on. Um, I mean, the Philippines is really, really uh, ramping up there with uh, the amount of action that's going on and the presentations that are are being left to uh, the observation of humanity, of course. So uh, from the philstar.com, uh, pork accused not guilty. So one of them pled guil uh, not guilty this one this week. Uh, the Shandon, or sorry, Sandy Ganbayan yesterday entered a not guilty plea for Senator Ramon Bong. Revealer Jr. after he refused to enter one himself in the plunder case filed against him over alleged misuse of his pork barrel funds. Alleged pork barrel fund scam operator Janet Lynn Naples and Revilla's chief of staff Richard Comby, on the other hand, pleaded not guilty. Around a dozen of their co-accused, led by former Technology Resource Center TRC Director General Dennis Kuhnman, entered the same plea. Revilla appeared before the Sandy Gan buy-in for the arraignment and repeatedly said, quote, no plea, your honors, end quote, after each comment, a complaint accusing him of pocketing P224.5 million was, was read to him, prompting the court to enter a not guilty plea on his behalf. So that means that he is an infant. The court took it upon themselves as the administrators of his estate to make a not guilty plea on behalf of this senator. See, and that's the same thing they've been doing to us forever, is administering our states for us under the law of infants, okay, and another mechanism that they use. Now, they can also declare you an infant when you're dual-minded. You go in there and claim your constitutional rights and say you're sovereign, and they're laughing their butts off, and they're saying, yeah, okay, this guy needs to be administrated. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll give him his constitutional yeah. rights, all you right. You showed up in my court. You gave me jurisdiction showing up in my court, and now you're telling me that you're not one of my citizens? You just claim to be by walking into my court. You know, you get that summons in the mail. It's an offer to contract. Basically, they're saying, well, so you're going to claim that last name, defend that title? Okay, what they have on that last name is a copy hold uh, on what is known as your franchise name. Your last name is uh, considered a franchise. We see how they took it in 1794 under the Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation. Article 2, oh, even where it that. talks about the post. Right. Okay, well, it's it's just that that's where in recent times that... Uh, Congress went bankrupt first. Yeah, right. After the Congress went bankrupt the first time. Well, they were. I think they were bankrupt in the beginning, but you don't see the actions just proceeding um, when they started this crap in uh, you know, the 1600s because they needed... 
some form of of uh, insurance to discharge their depravity then and that the, the word bankrupt actually means depraved they're soulless depraved that, that's always been and that's the foundation of ecclesiastical law not just do you know thyself but if you don't you're usually bankrupt you're depraved you're seeking the self which is what the psychopath does. It doesn't have a frontal lobe. It, it cannot realize that it's it's a, another being and that the, the other beings are just as, as uh, profoundly, profoundly priceless. Well, we've seen that their application of bankruptcy and uh, selling you the concept that we're all bankrupt when it was their bankruptcy. Right. And they knew this, you know, they they got uh, basically everybody by the tail and say, well, yeah, we're bankrupt, so we, we formed this new country, now we got to fund it, so, you know, we're going to have to pass all these bills and acts and everything, and and they already sold the idea that Congress is there uh, as their buddy and everything, so the controlling of the that basically goes way, way back, and it's it's part of the psychological uh, warfare because we're not as human beings as a sovereign state. We came into this earth and we inherited it. Right. Okay. Little did we know before we even came in here that the attorney had already declared it theirs and said that uh, you know we're going to charge you rent for living on our land and uh, you know. By the way, we're bankrupt here, and so we're going to have to get your uh, butt on the line here, uh, get on in there and get diagnosed and get your court summons and uh, help us offset this congressional bankruptcy, buddy. Yep, conjuring the dead. Conjure with law. They've put everybody into civil death simply by calling them debtors and making them believe it. Yeah, civil death. And... Fortunately for us, we figured it out and evidence that they were dead because we looked for them up and down and they're all around and every which way we loose and could find no proof of life. So we had to declare them dead and condemn their courts and all the rest of it because there's no judges there and just a bunch of lad attacks hanging out, cashing in on miser humanity. All right, you can read the case over at TammyPepperman.org, authorized documents. I suggest everybody go down there and download all those documents and see what we're talking about here. Get the attorney's own works and what they wrote back, and they, you know, we we, we said that you're, you know, uh, guilty of piracy and uh human trafficking genocide and they wanted to come back and argue statute well you haven't filed your formal change of name status by the state code <laughs> if you do that we can't tax you darn it stop stop wait no come back wait i, I can call you whatever i want to call you boy <laughs> Come on, come on. You're, now, you're, I'm interpolating, you're, of course, but I mean, that's the essence of what they were saying. It is. That's exactly the, what Attorneys happened. always make it sound nice, though, don't they? Yes, absolutely. But you can see in the case, walk through, I mean, step by step of what these attorneys attempt and, and how they play their games and all of their little quirky uh, movements and gesticulations as gestures. Now, I know how you uh, really like these doctors, too, so I got another one for you uh, out of the CBS, Corporate Broadcasting System. New York doctor charged in wife's 2012 death. This is Syracuse, New York. Well-known obstetrician who said his wife died after falling in the shower two years ago has been charged with her murder. Dr. Robert... Melander, 62, faces charges of second-degree murder and tampering with physical evidence. He, placed, he pleaded not guilty Monday during his arraignment in on, on an Daga County court and was freed on a $100,000 bail. 
So they released him. So maybe they can go, you know, get some more charges on him or something. If he goes to try to do this again out there, who knows? You know, if, if, if they find him guilty of murder, they got evidence that says he's guilty of murder. Why does the court system let him uh, go back out there and run amok? Nalander's 61-year-old wife, Leslie Nalander, was found dead in the family home in the Syracuse suburb of Fayetteville in September 2012. The county medical examiner's office initially ruled the death an accident after Nulander told police his wife slipped and fell in the shower. District Attorney William Fitzpatrick said at a press conference Monday that Leslie Nulander's body was found in a prone position 60 feet from the shower by emergency personnel. He said she had obviously uh, obvious blunt trauma to the side of her head and there is evidence indicating Robert Nylander moved his wife's body and changed the sheets to hide physical evidence. Then on top of that, I read this one, um, I believe it was today or yesterday. And on top of that, just after that, he, he started a charitable foundation in his wife's name by which to collect money. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Please said... The death was treated as suspicious when it happened. Okay, here we are, 2014, almost two years later, and he's still running amok out there. This Wait. is how the justice system and it's not <laughs> works that. things. They let him make money through that charitable foundation. Now they have a seizure on him. They yeah. knew he was a murderer. They let him out because they want to seize all of those assets. Exactly. Okay, exactly the point I was getting to. <laughs> Release him so he can go out there and... Hurt somebody uh, else. Down the road, they know they're going to cash in more on him. Right. Because he's lucrative. He's cost-effective for the corporate governance. Yeah, again, according uh, to this also, he, he, he was, uh, uh, well, let's see, no, it says um, they were not going through divorce proceedings at the time. He's widely known and widely loved in this community. And he's the suggestion him. that he committed his crime is literally inconceivable to many of the people who know him and know of him. Attorney Edward Menken said. Yeah, attorney. He's peaceful, said, you said? The attorney said he's peaceful, guys. Yeah, he's peaceful. <laughs> How's that for peace? Uh, this is sick. Boy, so many things that have been sold here are because uh, of this language that they've indoctrinated us with. And again, we have Webster selling us one side, and, and then, you know, um, the dictionary that nobody reads, Black's Law Dictionary, or nor does people go back and study the etymology of these words. So there's, you know, words that mean things differently than you're really uh, thinking as you were indoctrinated with in school. Like, what do they tell you to read in, in school? Webster's. Absolutely. Okay, and an independence in Webster's Dictionary doesn't say what it says in etymology, which says uh, not the opposite of dependent. Right. And I was trying to explain that to uh, a beloved yesterday and the day before. You know, when you're listening to attorneys, you are speaking what you call English. The attorneys are speaking Latin and French the majority of the time. Oh, it's Latin and French, and then right. and then sometimes Latin and Greek, though, and right? Latin and Greek, and see, English is Latin and Greek put together. It's not really English; it's just a Roman construct uh, four times out after the first Romantic languages, which was Italian, French, and Spanish. All of those were Romance languages from Rome, and then it transferred or transferred into what is known as the English language, and now in the English language. Colors have actions. That red is like a fire. Okay, no, red can't be on fire. Red is a color. It's it's already a concept. Don't don't give it life and action. And and you know the, the, the most profoundest years ago, you know when my youngest was like three or four, and she said to me, "Mom, that sunset is like a painting." And I'm like, "Oh my God!" She's like you know, removed from the self to the extent that she's describing life itself as a inanimate object, a painting, 
but she was witnessing her own, with her own eyes an actual sunset, but she was referring to it as an inanimate object instead of a relative um, experience, and, and that's, that's something that will never, ever lose me because that was my little one. You know, I, I've studied language for years and years. I've studied psychology for years and years. And yet, you know, when I saw that type of relativity setting in, in her brain based on this social engineering construct, that's when I started working harder and harder at breaking down the walls because I do not want her indoctrinated. I do not want any children indoctrinated into such um quote, realms of existence, if you're describing your everyday life that you're experiencing as paintings or as something other than they are, then there's something wrong. You're in the past tense of the self. And English moves you away four times at, at, the, at the, um, the least aggressive end of what the use of English language does. The, the most aggressive is 10 times out when you're describing yourself and giving yourself title and I am going to. That is like outside of the realm of relativity. You're either doing something and you're being something or you're describing an action in the future. That means you're looking forward. You're looking forward. That means that if you are looking forward to being, you are in the past tense of being. And you're seeking, seeking, running, running, running to be when in reality you actually are. And you've been indoctrinated to believe that you're all over the place in the past, in the future, in the, in the present, described as the present. But you're still in the past. You're seeking to be. I want to be this when I grow up. I want to do that. I want to be that. I should be. I ought to be. All of those things are indoctrinated states where they're teaching you to strive to be. And that allows the human race to be productive for the psychopath defensive titles you want to be something so bad not realizing you already are any other news stories that struck you today <laughs> there was a ton of them and i keep going off and um talking about other things uh let me look yeah hey, that's where i ran into last night i had a bunch of stuff i i mean just whole bunch of excellent stories judges getting cannibalized attorneys of course you know mostly the cops most of the cops are just getting rolled on by these attorneys and we know it's the attorneys because uh they're the ones that as you pointed out with that story about the kid that got uh, flash grenaded uh mother doesn't write that if you read that story that that story is written by an attorney right and the mom will play along, you know, because she's been traumatized, but that makes her an easy puppet. As the attorney swoop in and tell her, it was the cops, it was the cops, it was the cops. And she's so under duress right now, and she's she's absolutely in trauma. I mean, I mean, the, 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 the cops just got a uh, warrant from the uh, warrant ferry uh, to show up there. Right. That's my point. How, why, the, why are the cops there? Did the cops all get together at the uh, uh, fraternal... Uh, uh, Lodge of police and and say hey you know we ought to yeah finish this beer and go uh crazy somebody yeah you know go yeah you know, I heard that there might be a drug uh, user in this one address and uh no it's corporate council always of course of course it is well, let's see here we got Greek far right leader's wife under arrest this in Athens Greece lawmaker Elena Zaralia Zaralia Wife of Greece's jailed far-right leader has been placed under temporary house arrest until judges decide whether to detain her pending trial for allegedly running a criminal organization. Judges disagreed Wednesday whether Alina Zarulia, who denies the charges, sh uh, should be freed or jailed. The Judicial Council will rule on the matter within five days. Yeah, the Judicial Council. Corporate Council attorneys will rule on the matter. So they're ruling on each other. Uh, they just picked up his wife for um, engaging in organized crime, but that's what Congress does. They're an organized crime syndicate, and here you have a prime example of not only political cannibalism, but the easiest way to get to him is to arrest her, and then she rolls on him. So it never looks like it's their fault. Just it couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of 
uh, individuals. Right. That's what it said. You <laughs> individuals. Know? Ultimately, Judas always commits uh, political suicide. It doesn't matter who Judas is. Or Again, this is evidence. This is global. People. We'll be back on Saturday, folks. Thank you for being thankful. That's right. We'll see you.